Hello, everyone. Welcome to All-Star Wrestling here at ringside. This is Vince McMahon along with wrestling great Pat Patterson. And this week, Pat, we take another look at Mr. Fuji, Mr. Saito. Well, Vince, there's no question in my mind. I've said it before. Next to Rick Martel and Tony Guerrilla, they've got to be the best team in the world today. And believe me, no matter who steps in the ring with them, they're going to have a tough time because they are incredible. They really are great. We shall have, instantly the tag team champions with us in a non-title event. Tony Guerrilla and Rick Martel will join us on All-Star Wrestling. Also scheduled to be here will be King Kong Mosca. Well, Vince, King Kong Mosca is getting to be, uh, he's very frustrated. Uh, he wants to be a champion, and uh, he's hurt a lot of wrestlers, and I've said it before, King Kong Mosca is the type of guy that will do anything and once he gets going no one can stop him and that's the way he's starting now he's very frustrated so he's getting worse and worse we'll have king kong mosca along with pedro morales killer khan and a whole lot more so we shall return with the opening contest in just a moment discretionary viewer participation is advised for the following pro wrestling exhibition J.J. Bins, Chairman, Francis Walker is the Executive Secretary, and on the official side, Dr. Dennis at the ringside, Dr. George Sohadian, the timekeeper at the bell, Mike Mittman, and the referees for this hour of wrestling, Dick Worley, Gilberto Roman, Victor Quinones, John Stanley, and the Deputy Commissioner in Charge, Peter Lash, and my name is Joe McHugh. On the opening contest, it is scheduled for one fall with a 10-minute time limit. Introducing in the corner to my left, from New York City, Weighing 235 pounds, here is Jose Estrada. And his opponent, just making his way down the aisle, he'll ring in just a moment. From Puerto Rico, weighing 240 pounds, here he is. Pedro Morales. Should be a very exciting and fast moving match. Here we go. Spinning Estrada about. Is Estrada any faster than Pedro Morales? Pat? Well, at times, Vince, I would say Estrada is a lot quicker than Pedro Morales. Has a new look. Shaved his head. I tell you, that Estrada is well respect. You watch him move in the ring a lot of time. He moves like a cat. Very aggressive. Strider looks like a completely different individual with his uh, head shaved. I suppose most of us would, would we, Pat? <laughs> I would want to find out what I look like. Strider reaching for the rope. We've seen that many a time. Strider tries to stay close to rope when he's facing uh, someone whom he feels to be perhaps his equal or maybe a little better. Pedro, obviously, the more powerful of the two. 
Oh, there's no questions about it. Vince Pedro is a very powerful wrestler. You know, many times over the years, when a wrestler loses a championship, sometimes they lose more than the championship. They get depressed and uh, they're really downhill after losing the championship. But Pedro is a different type of guy. Pedro is more aggressive and he looks better and he's after any type of belt. As the time goes on, it seems like Pedro Morales gets better. Needed a midsection there. Kick to the midsection. Estrada with a hard right hand. Dazing Morales. Morales returning the favor. Appearing to cower in the corner a bit, Jose Estrada. Interesting situation here is now Estrada right back in the corner and Morales breaks away for the clean break. Very, very often Pedro will do that. Will uh, push his opponent in the rope and really give him a clean break. Well, Estrada certainly the aggressor at this moment. Which I think is a mistake because we all know that when Pedro gets mad, he really explodes, and uh, because of that, he gets to be very successful. Pedro on the short fuse. There it comes. And Estrada knows it, believe me. He knows Pedro. Estrada playing cat and mouse now with Pedro Morales, however. On the attack and then jumping through the ropes. In a defensive posture. Morales is getting hot. Estrada hoping to catch Pedro off guard in some fashion, no doubt. No, Vince, this is very aggravating when you know you're, you're upset and you're really going after your opponent. And he steps out of the ring. There's nothing you can do about it. I suppose you can go after him, but more often than not, I suspect that would be a mistake. A lot of times it could be a big mistake. Strider right back to his same tactics, and no doubt when Morales... If, in fact, Morales is able to retaliate, Estrada will run again. There he goes. And Pedro's coming after him. Pedro's coming after him this time. Down to the hardwood floor. So Estrada finding no reprieve at all on the outside of the ring. Morales went right after him. Pedro gets mad enough, he'll chase him right out the front door. Left hand to Morales, and a powerful left hand of that, finding the mark. Morales right back. Strada backing off. Morales now whipping him to the post. Oh, Morales waits for him, slams him to the canvas. Things looking quite bleak at the moment for Jose Estrada. You see how Pedro really picked up Mestrada. Really powerful man that Pedro is. Well, apply a reverse arm lock. Morales could take him down from that position, could he not, Pat? He sure can, Vince. Put his uh, left leg right between Estrada's legs and flip him over. And again, Estrada retaliating in an aggressive style. Good or ropes, Morales sidesteps, he works on the midsection. Oh, you could see Estrada's face, he's really feeling the pain. Oh, boy, that's short enough to win out of it. Morales burying the hand in the midsection. 
Pedro loves it to, com to uh, compete. Look at him. He just can't wait to get his hands on Estrada again. Estrada possessing a great deal of agility as well as speed. You know, if Estrada would have kept running out of the ring, this match would probably be over by now. Estrada keeps running out. Look at that. Leaps out of the corner, cat-like fashion. Pedro now. That powerful left hand catches him underneath the throat. On the side of the jaw there. Off the rope, Morales with a back back up. Morales, shoulder block. Trying it again. Look at this. Trista. Oh, beautiful victory by Pedro. Beautiful, quick move. Really surprised Estrada. Very well done. Estrada telegraphing his attempted back body drop just a little too quick. It is a time, eight minutes and one second, and the winner, Pedro Morales. Pedro Morales gets the Duke. Now to slow motion action. Left of Morales, whip to the rope. Now Morales sets him up, nicely done too. And from there, shoulder block. Trying it again, and look, telegraphic has been over. Morales puts on the brake. That is the mark of a true veteran and indeed a great competitor. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the next contest, a tag team match. It is scheduled for one fall with a 15-minute time limit. Introducing the team in the corner to my right from Panama City. Weighing 220 pounds, it is Steve King. And his partner from Venice, Italy, weighing 246 pounds, it is Dominic Danucci. And the opponents making their way down the aisle be in the ring in just a moment. And here they come. They are being led down the aisle by their manager, Captain Lou Albano. And from Osaka, Japan, weighing 270 pounds, it is Mr. Fuji. And from Tokyo, Japan, weighing 275 pounds, it is Mr. Saito. Lou Albano bowing to uh, Mr. Fuji, Mr. Saito. We'll have action in a moment. Dominic Ducci starting things off for his team, Mr. Saito, for the Japanese combination. Lou Albano has developed a Japanese dialect. Have you heard him lately, Pat? No, I haven't. <laughs> Look at Mr. Saito giving Dominic Dinucci a clean break by the rope and bowing. But that's one thing you must watch very carefully when Saito does that. Believe me, he is very, very sneaky. Saito, very powerful. Oh, boy, did he lay it in there. Dominic came right back at him.
you know, you mentioned earlier that Saito being a very, very powerful wrestler. He has a tremendous uh, amateur wrestling background. He represented Japan in the Olympic in 1964, I imagine. Great amateur background. Silver medalist winner, was he not? Pardon me? He was a silver medalist winner, was he sure not? Sure was, Vince. Mr. Fuji with more martial arts skills than Saito. You know, Vince, what makes them a very tough team is the fact that they're both have a good wrestling, amateur wrestling background, plus the fact that they know Jari, the judo, karate, makes, them, makes it very tough to go in the ring with those two men. Attacking from behind, Saito, and boy, you just can't turn your back on either one of these two. Fuji now from behind, Saito from in front, being held. Oh, Mr. Referee, you're at the wrong spot. Well, if Steve King would have got out of the ring sooner, the referee would have had time to turn around and catch Saito and Fuji. Look how aggressive that Saito is. Boy, he is there. Look at that. Trap and shoulder development on Saito. Well, he's in tremendous condition. You should never turn your head when you're in the ring with Saito and Fuji. Believe me, they're very sneaky. They know the tricks of tag team. Dominic. Ah, oh, Steve King coming in for no reason. Fuji clamping down on a trap piece as Dominic should be able to escape from this hold. Oh, yes. Off the rope, Fuji knocked it a canvas. Dominic tries it again. Fuji takes him over. Drops the knee right down to the chest. Why is Steve King coming in? Uh, Dominic motioned him to come in then. Oh, they take advantage of any situation. I would think it'd be extremely tough for a referee to maintain order and maintain exactly which one of these two Japanese should be in the ring. Dominic coming on strong now. And now, back to the not-so-neutral corner. Fuji with a tag rope around Dominic Dinucci's throat. Vince, they know very well how to distract the referee and how to distract the, uh, there's a, their opponent across the ring so they can really work on two against one. Believe me, they know the secrets. Dominic carrying uh, the full weight of the partnership in the tag team. Steve King yet officially to be in the match from behind. Fuji got him right in the kidney area. Look at Fuji. Stalking his prey. Well, that man Fuji can break a cement block, uh, blocks of wood with his bare fist. He's very, very powerful. Dominic trying to turn it around with a threatening gesture. Saito. In now. Officially or unofficially, Pat, I didn't see the tag. Yes, the Fuji did tag? Met, met the tag. They, they'll do a lot of tags sometime and nobody will see. They're very sneaky, like I said. Dominic moving out of the way and Saito, perhaps in a bit of trouble. Steve King, coming in wide open, Saito. Fuji inching his way in. Saito. 
Making an attack to Fuji now. Wide open Steve King. Ooh, what a chop. Golly Moses, they can chop a tree down with that. Oh, Vince, I'm telling you. Again, open Steve King and Fuji once again on the attack. Well, I think you men like Fuji sure can take a lot of punishment. He's a very, very tough wrestler. Oh, devastating suplex. Cover. Saito and Fuji, victorious. Albano, Albano turning Japanese on us. Our ladies and gentlemen, it is time. Seven minutes and twenty seconds. And the winners, the Oriental team of Mr. Fuji and Mr. Saito. Slow motion action now. Will show us the suplex in a moment. Wide open, Steve King. Up in the air, now watch this maneuver. Oh, a devastating suplex. We'll be back. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the next contest, scheduled for one fall with a 10 minute time limit. But first I want to introduce the manager. Here he is, the fashion plate of wrestling, Fred Alassi. And in the corner to my right, from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, weighing 225 pounds, making his first appearance in this arena, here is Jeff Carini. And in the corner to my left, from Mongolia, weighing 292 pounds, here is Killer Khan. Killer Khan taking on the newcomer, Jeff Craney. We certainly wish Mr. Craney all the luck in the world as the match is just about ready to get underway. Killer Khan, all of a sudden, that's all over. Newcomer Jeff Craney. Khan, a gifted athlete, no doubt of it. Big 300 pounder, has so much agility. For a Speed, man of his size, he, has, he yeah, sure really. does, Vince. It's amazing. He is amazing. And it looks to me like the, the last couple of months that he's put on a few pounds, but he still moves like a cat, I'll tell you. And he's more aggressive. Still riding high on the reputation, infamous reputation of being the man who knocked Andre the Giant out of action for quite a while, broke his leg, and also might add riding the crest of uh, the recent developments of young uh, quick draw Rick McGraw with his neck injury, who uh, is still hoping to come back, but apparently it's going to take a lot longer, if at all he does. Oh, I sure would like to see him come back to the wrestling. I'm sure he misses it very much. Look at Khan. The only refuge for this young man is to get out of the ring. 
You know, Vince, Fred Blassie has films and tapes of almost every wrestler in the world. Fred Blassie spends a great deal of money investigating different wrestlers in different parts of the world. And that's why he wants the best. He wants to make a lot of money. Well, he certainly has accomplished that. He has made indeed a lot of money, Mr. Blassie has, both in his wrestling days and as a manager. I can't believe that that all the year, I mean, uh, all the time that uh, Killer Khan has been in this country, he still doesn't speak English. Well, Pat, I suspect that many times uh, the likes of a Khan could speak English a little better than at other times. He speaks as much of it as he wants to, I suspect. Probably. I've never heard him. Khan with a somewhat of a karate thrust a moment ago. Jeff Craney still gets up. Off the rope, Khan setting him up with a new knee with nailed him right into the abdominal wall. Craney's had it this moment. Referee should think about stopping that match. Well, there's one thing that Khan knows how to do is to punish an opponent. Karate thrust again. Khan off the rope and down into the chest. Nobody gets up after that. Well, it's over 300 pounds coming down across your chest or your neck most of the time. There's no way you can get up. Blassie is not satisfied. Just has to get that one little thing in for himself, doesn't he? He has to put his two cents in there. It is the time. Three minutes and 54 seconds. The winner, the Mongolian Killer Khan. Killer Khan, victorious. And now to some slow motion action. Off the rope, Khan set him up. It was pretty much Killer Khan all the way. At Thrust just shot uh, Jeff Craney right up in the air. Khan working on the back area now. Watch him snap him right down. Right over. Tremendous impact. And forget about this. As we said before, nobody gets up after that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the next contest it is a non-title tag team match. Introducing in the corner to my left from New York City, weighing 239 pounds, here is the unpredictable Johnny Rod. And his partner from the Isle of Malta, weighing 275 pounds, Baron Miguel Cicluna. I'm in the corner to my right, the World Wrestling Federation's Tag Team Champions from Quebec City, Canada, weighing 234 pounds. Here is a Rick Martel. I'm this partner from Auckland, New Zealand, Weighing 240 pounds, Tony Garria. This bout is set for one fall with a 15-minute time limit. Tony Green and Rick Martel getting ready to tag up and go at it. Johnny Rods having his problems. Well, I give him credit. Uh, he got out of that. He got out of, get out of that situation pretty well. Oh. 
Look at the physique of Rick Martell. Sure looks great, doesn't he, Vince? He is so fast, lightning like quick. All kinds of agility, power. He just has it all. Not to take anything away from Johnny Rods. Oh. Johnny Rods, very powerful. Nice take down by Martell. Another one. Beautiful. Look how quick he really applies those arm drags. I mean, that speed, Vince, that's very, very well done. Both wrestlers look in each other in the eyes. But Johnny Rods at times moves like a cat, I'll tell you. Rods pouring it on now. Elbow to the back of the head. Martel almost able to tag his partner, Gurria, but standing in the way, Johnny Rods. Martel's going to have to do something and do it in quick order. Martel trying to clear the cobweb out of his. But the not going to help it. Double team effort for a moment. Gurria protesting to the referee. And there's a rugged wrestler, Baron Cicluna. He's a big man and he's rugged. Experienced. Boy, they sure have Rick Martell in trouble now. Cicluna, some time ago, once held the co holder of the tag team championship belt. Now Martell trying to fire back. Cicluna going down. Now, finally, Gurria come in. Well, now they're really working on the leg. I tell you, with Johnny Rods, you got to stay away from that corner. Johnny Rods now coming in, uh, leaping off the top rope. So Rods and Cicluna surprisingly have been very effective against Tony Gurria and Rick Martel. They are, they're very, very surprised. Uh, well, they're both very well experienced, and tonight everything is combining very well for both of them. You can actually see on Johnny Rogers' face how aggressive he wants to be. Oh, yes! <laughs> Rogers was hurt. Sapuna illegally in there, so is Martel. Well, that's the kind of partner to have. He'll come in the ring and he'll be going to do something about it. He doesn't just come in the ring and tell the referee what's going on. He comes in the ring and he does something about it. Gurria making sure he's not kicked from behind. Reaching over, makes the tag. And more trouble for Mr. Rods. Rods doesn't have any idea where he is. Rods wants to tag anybody. Will somebody tag Johnny Rods? Rods is out on his feet. Rod seeming to come to, now he can't make the tag. Just like that, you see the resiliency of a Johnny Rods. He'll come right back at you. Oh. To the ropes, off, oh, another back, no! One, two, three, yes sir! Not a surprise that Johnny Rod 
gets really upset. What a quick, beautiful sunset flip applied by Rick Martell on Johnny Rods. And they're both very upset, Mike Cicluna and Johnny. Let's get the official time. Here is the time, five minutes and 58 seconds, and the winners, the World Wrestling Federation's Tag Team Champion, Tony Garia, Rick Martel. Red Martel victorious. Boy, what an ovation from this capacity crowd. Now, back to some slow motion action. Here now, with Rods setting up Rick Martel to the ropes now. Lifting a knee, and he just spun him in mid-air. Such was that impact. Johnny Rods, a force to reckon with all the way. Setting him up again, but Martel goes over. Hooks day up. One, two, three. It's lights out. And another victory for Tony Garea and Rick Martel. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the next contest is scheduled for one fall with a 10-minute time limit. Introducing in the corner to my right from Brooklyn, New York, weighing in at 240 pounds, here is George Rosello. And his opponent is making his way down the aisle. Coming down the aisle with his manager, Captain Lou Albano. And here he is from Toronto, Canada, weighing 325 pounds. Here is King Khan Maska. King Kong Maska, he is a mammoth individual and mean. Here we go. Off the rope, Rosello down to the canvas again. Vince, there's no question in my mind that Mosca is going to be one of the biggest and meanest wrestler in the world today. Believe me, this man can get mean. Look how vicious he can be. Now this, Vince, in wrestling that should not be allowed. He could have pinned that man not once but twice, but he picks him up, just wants to punish him. Now this should not be taking place. Oh, he's making mincemeat out of this fellow. I mean, there's no question that Rosello cannot do anything. He can hardly breathe. Rosello, just no competition at the moment. Finally, one, two, three. Put the three count on him. Seems as though, Pat, what do you feel? You, you saw a guy like Mosca who could have defeated this man uh, earlier on, pinned him several times, or looked like he was pinning, yanked him up. Should that result in disqualification? In my opinion, Vince, the referee should disqualify the man. Maybe warn him one time, but there's no question in my mind that Dick Worley should have disqualified Mosca. There is no reason for that. It is the time, one minute and 34 seconds, and the winner, King Kong Mosca. King Kong Mosca, victorious. We can, we're gonna get a little interview. There's King Kong Mosca, another victory under his belt. And now let's go to Pat Patterson who wants to ask the referee Dick Worley a question. Dick, I'd just like to ask, 
your opinion because I was very frustrated sitting there and many times I'm watching wrestling now what Moscow was doing he, there's no question he had this man beat but every time you counted two he lift him up and you let the match go I saw you warn him a couple of times but why didn't you disqualify him don't you have the right to do that I'm frustrated myself I, I warned him three times I'm going to disqualify him I'm going to disqualify him and I'm telling you this is the last time I'm taking it from these guys from now on when they pull that stuff I'm just going to DQ him right off the bat there's not going to be any more of this stuff. I'm, I'm just fed up with it. Every time we warn him, we tell him, I know I should have disqualified him. I know he's a big star. I, I'm just getting fed up with it. From well, that, you know, everyone that watches that, I mean, there's no question that Moscow had this man beat, and I felt that you should have disqualified him. But you're the boss in the ring. You're the one that goes by the rules. But I felt you should disqualify him. So I hope that next time you do your job well. Thank you very much.